Hi, it's Mark for Ableton Daily. And yes, guys, I'm back. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I did move to Oregon, and uh, it's really nice up here. And uh, I finished my studio, so I'm back in the studio now and looking forward to creating some more sound design tutorials for everybody out there. And I wanted to say thanks for hanging in there to my subscribers. And I've noticed uh, I have uh, <laughs> quite a few more subscribers now than I did when I, when I left. So I wasn't going to leave forever. I just, uh, you know, had to tear down everything and then put everything back together. And here I am now. All right. So it's a late night here and I'm just, uh, just relaxing. So let's go ahead and get back to this tutorial. And today I'm going to show you how to create this sound that sort of resembles like a stuttering effect. And it's applied to many sounds. It's actually a process that's applied to different sounds uh, to give that certain effect. And it's heard in different sci-fi movies such as uh, Transformers, uh, Star Wars, any, any movie like where you have, uh, you know, a spaceship or a machine or, you know, like a robot or something like that. And it sort of sounds like this. That might sound familiar to you. The other night I was watching the Batman Begins movie and I was watching the tumbler uh, jump over the rooftops and it was turning on the rooftops and it was making these stuttering effects. And I thought, you know, what, that would be a really cool idea to make a tutorial on that. And uh, I actually have the clip right here to show you. Uh, it's just uh, from this movie clips channel. Uh, and here's the scene right here. And I can actually just show you that scene and play that back for you so you can see and, and hear the exact sound that I'm talking about. So, so here we go. All right, so there's a clip right here where you see the computer and then it'll uh, go back to Batman and you'll see him turn the steering wheel to the left and then you'll see the tumbler turn around the corner and then you'll hear that sound th that I'm talking about. Here we go. <laughs> there you go. I'll go ahead and play that back so you can hear it again. There we go. And I, I posted this uh, video on a couple sound design forms just to and ask people what they thought about the sound and, and, and actually, you know, where they think it came from. And to my surprise, a lot of the people said it was an animal and, uh, or it sounded like an animal anyway, you know, sort of looking through the sound, if you will. And, uh, like a Sasquatch or a bear or a panda or something like that. So I took some bear samples and I put them into, uh, I put them in Ableton live and I just, uh, I, I bounced them down to a stereo track or a stereo clip and I put them in a the sampler and I, I just came up with something like this. And here's the sound without the modulation. Here's another version of it right here. This was actually the first track that I created and then I duplicated this first track here. And, and when I duplicated it, it actually duplicates the plugins that I have. So I still have sampler here with all the same settings. And I just changed the pitch of the sound on this track here. And I can actually play both of these tracks at the same time. I can just hold down the command key and just click on another track to arm it. So I have both tracks armed. And I'll go ahead and just press uh, the key here. And after I did that, I made a duplicate of that track. And then I added a synthesizer right here. And I will go ahead and arm this track as well. It's getting pretty loud here. I'll probably have to turn down the master. So by having all this, I recorded myself playing some keys, as you can see right here on these clips. And uh, the final sound that I have, I bounced these tracks down to another track, which is right here. And then I chopped it up and I add a little, uh, added a little ambient boom sound. 
And I'll let you just go ahead and hear the whole thing here. Here we go. Let's go ahead and wind this back. And all I did here is I just, uh, after I bounced it down to this audio clip, I've chopped it up and I've changed the pitches and sliced, a, sliced up this clip. That's all I've done there. And, and that's pretty much it. So let me show you how to actually create this sound. All right, so we're gonna create this sound from scratch and I'm gonna try to move along pretty quickly here just because of the video time that we have left. I've uh, downloaded this bear sound royalty free off the internet and the original sound was mono and so I had to convert it to stereo. If you want to use your own sounds, make sure that they're stereo or if they're mono, then you'll have to convert them to stereo. And if you're not sure how to do that, believe it or not, the video before this one shows you how to convert mono clips to stereo clips. Okay, so here's our little bear sound that we're going to use. All right, so what we need to do first is load up sampler on a MIDI track. So what I'll do is just right click here, insert MIDI track, and then I'll come over to the live devices and expand this instruments folder, find sampler, go ahead and click and drag it into the MIDI effects Dropbox. We need to get this audio clip of this bear into sampler, very easy to do. We can just click on it and drag it right into sampler, just like this, and there it is. And if the track is armed, then we can just press the key on the controller and it should play back the sound. Okay, I think the first thing that we're gonna do is start with a panning effect, or if you wanna call it an effect. It's just a panoramic process where the sound is coming from the left speaker and then it just goes to the right. Sort of like if a spaceship or like a robot is going from the left or the right. To do this, go over to the modulation tab and turn on the auxiliary envelope here where we can apply different uh, parameters to this envelope. Now under A and B, go ahead and click on A and it's kind of going off the screen here, but you'll find panorama. Okay, it's right here. Okay, the first thing we need to do is adjust the auxiliary envelope so we can achieve that left to right sound effect. First, just move over the attack. And you sort of have to look at it like the initial part of this envelope being the left channel and then the attack being the right channel. Down here where it says panorama, there's a little value box right here. Go ahead and click and drag up and you can see the numbers change here. Positive 100 could be left, negative 100 could be right. So let's go ahead and start off with a positive 100. I think I'll give myself an attack of about one second. And let's go ahead and play the controller and see all the sounds. Okay, I'm gonna change the attack to two seconds. Okay, cool. And you can see it's starting from the left and it's going to the right, but then it goes right back to the left. Well, why does it do that? And that's because we have the sustain here is too low. So we need to increase the sustain percentage up a little bit. And let's go ahead and hear our sounds now. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and move on. The next one is the low frequency oscillator. And this is probably the most noticeable part of the sound. All right, so let's go ahead and click here and turn this on. And we're gonna use a triangle wave for this. I found that the triangle wave works the best for the stuttering sound. And you'll also need to come down here where it says volume and you can crank this up. And I found that somewhere around 90, 93, 94% works really good. Uh, that way it's not cutting too much. Uh, you are letting some of the original sound bleed through underneath the stutter a little bit and that always sounds better. Uh, but let's go ahead and hear what we have so far. Okay, so you can see it's kind of a wavy, very, very slow modulation. So what we need to do is adjust the frequency and we have this set on rate and that's fine. So over here on the frequency control, let's go ahead and just uh, increase the frequency, making it higher, which will narrow the waveforms, making the stutter sound faster. Watch this. 
what you can do is apply this LFO to the auxiliary envelope. And this way you can create a type of effect where the stuttering effect is coming in much quicker or it's stuttering a lot faster over on the left speaker. And then as soon as it gradually comes over to the right speaker, it starts to slow down. So that's the sort of sound that I've been hearing and let's go ahead and try it out. We still have another adjustment here. We can apply to the auxiliary envelope right down here on B. Go ahead and click here, select LFO one rate. It's right here. And then we're gonna to need to give it a value and how much value I don't know yet. So let's go ahead and hear how it sounds. Okay, so it sounds like we've slowed it down a little bit and I'm going to just give it a negative value. So hopefully this will allow the frequency to start at a lot higher frequency and then slow down as it reaches the right speaker. Let's try that out. Okay, perfect. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and turn up the initial frequency here just a little bit higher. There we go. Nice little sweet spot there. So that's the basis of the sound there. You can do other things such as add a filter and you can create a filter envelope and you can animate that filter. Uh, in other words, instead of doing this by hand, you can actually have the filter envelope control the filter for you. And here's a little helpful tip when designing sounds inside Sampler. Always try to make sure that your envelopes have the same timing. Uh, especially if you're working with a very well self-contained type sound. Uh, for an example, on my auxiliary envelope here, uh, the most crucial one would be the attack. As you can see, the attack is, uh, is about two seconds here. Well, you'll wanna probably match the attack of the filter envelope to around the same time. That way, as things are happening, uh, the different effects and, and filters that you're working with happen at the same time. And so what I'm gonna do here though is drag this over to about two seconds, 2.35 seconds. And I'm going to increase the amount of how this filter envelope is, uh, or how the filter is affected by the filter envelope. And I'll definitely want a longer sustain here. So I will increase sustain all the way up. And let's go in here how that sounds. Okay, probably just need to adjust this filter a little bit. Okay, cool. I'm gonna go ahead and increase the release on this. And as you can hear it, as it's coming from the left speaker, it's sort of muffled a little bit. And that's just because of the low pass filter that I'm applying here. And what the filter is doing is moving this frequency across the board here allowing the higher frequencies to come in as the sound gets closer to the right speaker. All right, listen very closely. I'll go ahead and demonstrate that. Okay, it might be a little bit too much. I'll just let off a little bit there. Okay, and that's pretty much the basis of the sound. That is the sound, folks. And what you can also do, if you wanna hold down the keys on the controller and just have the sound keep repeating itself, you can adjust the sustain mode. So let's just say you wanted the sound to play over and then reverse and go back over the sound. You can do that. I can go ahead and turn this on and set a release mode even, uh, just our back and forth release mode. Let's go ahead and try that out. <laughs> okay. Pretty cool. And if you want to change the pitch, you would just play a different octave on your controller. So I can play it a little bit higher. I mean, you could probably come up with so many ideas using this method. So, so there you go, guys. I'm pretty much out of time. So thanks for watching. And uh, this is Mark for Ableton Daily. If you like the videos, please subscribe. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Take care.